it. I'm so glad that you are here for 7-Minute Seed for Moms. Now listen, if you're not a mom, you can still listen. Uh, women were created to be moms, and we were created to uh, respond to the spiritual head of our home and our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so we are created to do this. And when the new creation seed comes in us, we have the ability to ignite that in others, to bring that to life. Um, and that's what this is about, that seven-minute seed, bringing seed to life. There's so much potential in a seed, everything that that seed needs, right? And so we're going to protect it. We're going to water it. We're going to we're gonna keep it in the shade as much as it needs to and, it, and not dry out. And that is what we want to do in our homes is protect that seed, the seed of the Word of God in the hearts of our children, the seed of new life. And it's such an honor to be able to do that. And that's what this seven-minute seed is about. Now, we're going to pick up on what we talked about last time, and that was keeping our, our, our and our children's, our family's mind on things above and what that really meant. And that's coming out of uh, RootBible.com uh, series that we're going into, which is the real you. Uh, we're currently in Handle with Care. We're just finishing up that semester, and it is an awesome semester where we handle the Word of God with care. We handle sin with care. We handle what God says about anything with care. And in order to do that, or as we do that, we will discover who the real us is, who in, in new creation um, we've been made to be. That seed that He's put in us, everything that's in that seed is available to us, and we get to discover what that is. And that's a big part of the real you. But then for adults, we have 21 day live interactive every day for one hour coming up. And it starts March 1st. You're not going to want to miss that. Register at rootbible.com. It is an amazing reboot course where you're like, things just aren't working. And what the word says just doesn't make sense. And I'm about to give up on this Christianity thing because you've just simply looked at it wrong. You've maybe been taught wrong. You've understood it wrong. You've been in a family that focused more on the image of Christianity than living their new life in Christ. This helps reboot that thinking and releases you into this new life living and, and take advantage of everything that he's already placed in you. It is so powerful. We've watched lives be changed. Every single life be changed that has taken the course and you can take it to one hour a weekday for 21 days with us live interactive, us being myself, Kate Richter, and my husband, and that's through rootbible.com. Now let's get in to our seven minute seed. You guys, I'm so excited about this one uh, because we're taking what we talked about in the last one and how do we make that real in our homes with our kids? All right, so last time we talked about, let's keep our minds on things above. Here goes our timer. How do we help our kids do that? Um, our oldest is attacking our youngest and blaming him for something he messed up on. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. This is big. This is big in our house. We have two things I'm going to reveal to you right now. This is big. Three things. You know what? I just, I heard in my heart three things. Three things are, because now we have ages four, eight, and 12. Now, when I correct my four-year-old, it looks different than when I correct my 12-year-old. The same goes with our correction with the Lord and our growing up in Christ. The same way, the way the Holy Spirit leads and guides us and corrects us. And it says he corrects those he loves. The reason we do this with our children is because we love them. And we know in our hearts that, that how they're acting and how, what they're responding out of is not what God has created them to do. So with my four-year-old, say she's the one. Let's go back. Not, not the older doing the younger. She's the one screaming or demanding her way. Um, it used to be, uh-oh, that's wrong. Let's go. We're going to time out. And she'd ah, throw a fit. And I'd stay calm and i stay in my righteousness. Even though my flesh and my soul are crying out, I stay uh, with my mindset on things above. And that is the eternal results for this eternal being in front of me, not my frustration or my disappointment in her actions. And walk her to time out and set the timer. And then when she calms down, 
um, after the timer goes off, we can review that this is not who God's created her to be. This is not honoring. And you say, a four-year-old doesn't know that. A three-year-old doesn't know that. It's true. But my vernacular of the truth of God's word will stay the same. This is not honoring your family. This is not honoring God. This is not who he's created you to be. So let's find out who that is. And that's kindness and gentleness and self-control. And he not only called you to be that way, but he sends a helper to help you do that. Right now, that's mommy and daddy. And when you receive Christ as Lord, that will be the Holy Spirit. So it's very easy to talk to them about eternal things from birth. Now, that's the way we talk to her. Uh, my eight-year-old, often uh, he finds himself in thought. So how do we talk to him? Uh, one of the things we are saying to him often when he says, I don't know why I'm feeling this way or why I had this thought come into my mind, right? Or or he'll say something and he, you know he didn't mean it. So a large one will ask him, He now mind you, he is saved and he has received the Holy Spirit. So we know that we can talk to him about eternal things. So we'll say, who told you that, bud? Right? What, what voice are you listening to? Are you listening to your flesh, your fleshly desires? Are you listening to your soul? I want to be right. And I'm thinking about things I shouldn't that would make me happy but not God happy? Or am I listening to the voice of the Lord to maybe the scripture that we're memorizing this week um, or something of that nature? Now, to my 8 and 12-year-old, to keep our mind on things above, we're going to have to view everything through the mind of Christ through the word and filter it. And I, I say going to have to as if it's a chore. I'm telling you, I promise you with all of my heart, when you start doing these things normally, they know them as normal. So it is not a chore to do this, but to simply uh, tell their flesh no, or to tell their soul no, because it's normal, because they're, they have been renewed from an early earthly age to see eternal things in a mature way. According to Paul, in three years, you can be mature enough to teach. Now he's talking about three earthly years, but the maturity that happens in the supernatural realm, when you are reading the word, when you are filling up, when you're taking authority over your flesh, when you're choosing God's way over the earthly uh, darkness dominated way, then you're ready because you're, you're revealing what's in that seed quicker. You know, my husband and I like to garden. There are some seeds that germinate faster and there are some that take longer. Uh, you'll put a seed in, it'll be like, you know, 40 days to fruitfulness, right? The leaves that we grow for fodder, for instance. Or there will be seeds that'll be like four years before you have fruit. And so there are different areas, of course, that are coming from this seed, but the, the seed itself developing its strong roots is solely determined on one's purpose of, of taking care of that seed that God's given us and allowing it to take root and then bear fruit in our lives. So your kids can be more spiritually mature than someone who is of earthly age, older, and been in the church longer, but haven't cult cultivated that seed that God has given them. All right. And that's okay. And that's what we want. We want them to be more spiritually mature than us when we walk off this earth, uh, should Jesus tarry. So the final one, our, our oldest one and, and, our, and our middle one. And now this is coming across even to our younger one so that we can set the tracks for how even my husband and I take authority over our flesh or a reaction we might have that was apart from Christ and not set on things above or uh, emotions or or uh, feelings that would come that aren't rooted in Christ and keeping our thoughts on things above. So it would be uh, three things. Relent. So they're relenting their fleshly or solical nature in that moment. I'm going to relent being uh, saying angry things. I'm going to relent my rebellion. I'm going to relent whatever it is. Repent. Father, I'm sorry I chose my way and earthly things over you. And then um, repeat Let's try that again. Okay, we're going to do this the fruitful way, the heavenly way, the mindset on Christ way. So that's relent, repent, repeat. And that is something that we say to ourselves and our children. Right now, I can see that your solical nature is rising up and wanting control of this situation, whether that's for your own feelings, so that you don't get in trouble, so that your brother gets in trouble, so that you don't have to do your work, you know, fill in the blank. 
right? So that you looked good. Uh, I can see that your soulful nature uh, rose up. I think you need to relent that soulful nature, like the word says to the Lord, and allow him to lead us into all truth here. So let's repent for, for choosing the soul's way over God's way. What do you say? Okay. And my husband and I talk to each other like this. And then uh, uh, after we relent, after we repent, I'm sorry, then we repeat. Let me try that again. I'm going to deliver the message calmly in the peace of the Lord with authority and have victory because I'm giving honor to him in the way I'm communicating. Your kids can get this. You can get this. Your house can be a place of joy and peace and and prosperity in all things just because you take what the word says and you make it reality in your home because it's reality, but whether or not you'll live it is up to you. It's whether or not your kids will live it is up to us to bring that as their reality that they know and experience. And I promise you, once they do, there's nothing else they want. Knowing when thoughts don't belong to them, knowing when when something that's happened isn't God and taking authority over it, knowing what God has given them and made available to them. You know, keeping focus on things above is so important. So I hope you've enjoyed seven minutes this eve. We went a little over. We won't do that again. I hope, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. I pray blessings over your family, that this seed takes root and multiplies in big ways in you and your home. We'll see you next time.